Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise be to the Lord. Welcome, welcome to Pine Hills Community Church. 10 o'clock service here today. Today is Father's Day, by the way, so we have two special occasions. We're going to worship and praise our Lord, and we're going to also celebrate the fathers in the house. And you out there on social media land, you as well, we thank you for tuning in with us. And if you don't mind, hit your share button, hit your like button. We want all to have a part of this worship experience we're going to go through today. Amen, 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 amen. And if you're going any farther, let, let me share with you this. God is a wonderful God. He loves us. And I'm reminded of Genesis, the 14th chapter, got an interesting situation that took place there. Abram is going to hunt for his nephew Lot. He finds him, he delivers him, brings him back, but he meets a guy, a guy by the name of Melchizedek. He is a high priest of Salem, but also he's the king of Salem. And they both bless one another. But what Melchizedek had to say to Abram was this. God, God the Most High has been on your side, bro. It's God the Most High who helped you to find your nephew Lot. It's God the Most High who helped you to bring him back safely. And they both praised the Lord. They both gave him praise and worship. See, the Most High God is the one who is the possessor of the earth. He's the one who created this thing. And he desires that all of his creation worship him, obey him, and Abram was one of the very few who did. You know, we might have a lot of things in our lives that were more pressing to us, but maybe things in our lives this last week were kind of like what happened with Abram. You didn't know which way was up, which way was down. But one thing Abram did know, he believed in God and trusted him to get him through. And that's what we're going to do today. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for all things. We praise you. We uplift your name, God. Everything that has breath, give you praise, Father. In this house today, and wherever else others are gathered in your name to worship, it is in your name we pray and say amen and amen. And now our voices of praise at PACC will lead us in worship. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Rise and shine. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Um, we were going to go right on in to uh, do a baby dedication, but I know we're still waiting on the family, I believe. Um, and so what we're going to do is move right along. I do want to say uh, to all our fathers in here, happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. If you're not a father in here, can we really quick just stand up? Let's honor the fathers. If we can just stand up and just clap for them. Let's salute them. Come on, let's honor them. Let's honor them. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. We appreciate what God is doing in your life and how he continues to use you. Um, um, in this time, I give honor to my father-in-law, uh, who's in here, and to my dad, Mr. Lee. Then my dad up in Georgia, amen, amen, amen. So we just definitely honor you and thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your push. Thank you for staying in the lives of your children, amen. I got a chance yesterday, man, I was, I was actually looking at this video. I don't know how I came up on it. And the father was just losing it and he's, he just, he had, he was video videoing the um, the mere fact that the police was outside and he had his son on the inside of the house and he was just stating that I've been through so much I told my family I was I was I was losing it it was just too much but nobody listened to me nobody nobody was there to console me and he had this all on live while he's shooting at the police he's recording all of this and the son is right there in the room. Baby son, not knowing what's going on. He's actually giving the son cereal just so that he can stay calm. And he's telling the police, listen, y'all can come up here if you want to, but I'm gonna defend myself. And he said, I'm not gonna kill myself, but you're not gonna come up in here. And he just kept going back and forth. And he did say, I was mentally he kept saying, I was mentally a wreck. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Let me tell you why I honor our men. It's because sometimes, ladies, we don't know all of what men deal with. It's not as easy as you think it is, especially when you really hold your responsibilities close to your heart. You want the best, and sometimes men we've done a bad job or a poor job man, and people would just say pray about it pray about it no some of us need a therapist why y'all quiet some of some of you some some of our dads and our moms our parents back in the day i get it they prayed about it and they were miserable they were miserable because they didn't have practical steps because they tried to over spiritualize stuff that they deal with and every now and then, you need to have not only a connection with God, but sometimes I believe that God can have a saved person who's a therapist. Amen. 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 I only got one amen, and that's from a woman that's sitting up here. Man, it's just, our men are, are going through so much, and we're trying to do this thing on our own. And my prayer is, fellas, if it's getting hard, it's getting tight, don't do life by yourself. Amen. Don't do life by yourself. It is good to always have a mentor. It is good to always have a therapist. Come on, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. It's good to have some kind of, get some kind of advice from not only people who are in the Bible, but get some advice from people who are experts in other areas so that you don't lose yourself. Because at the end of the day, if we're fathers in here, our children are looking to us. Did y'all hear what I just said? A lot of people say, well, Pastor Miles, I don't believe in staying in a relationship for the sake of the children. 
I believe that a little bit, but some other part of that, I, uh, it's better to have a father and mother in the house. Why y'all quiet? Why we quiet? It's better to have a mother and a father in the same house. I know you can do it by yourself, but it's always good to have a mother and father. You can, you're better together. And anybody that's in here that's single, and you had to raise your children on your own. You did the best you could, but you know good and well if you had a man, you had your, a good man, shall I say. A good man. So, yeah, I hear the ladies right now, because you can have a man, but is he good to you? Yeah. So we want to honor our men. We want to. I want to tell the men who have been going through I don't know why I'm feeling this so strong. Those men who've been dealing with mental issues, emotional issues, I, I thank God that you stand, you, you have stood the test of time. You continue to stand with God. Though it may be hard, you find a way to keep pushing in God. So we honor you for that. We celebrate you for that. And we tell you to keep on going. And if you don't, if you don't know it, you got a church that's praying for you. That's, that wants to see you do great things. Amen. 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 Listen, I want to say thank you to those who are watching us online. I'm going to have the praise team come back up. And immediately as they're done, hopefully we have the family in here. We're going to do that baby dedication. Um, get that out the way. We're going to get the word and get you out of here so that you can enjoy this uh, great Father's Day with the family. So we're going to give it up for our praise team. They're going to come back and sing for us. Amen? Amen. I may here come to bless the Lord today. Come on and lift your hands. Come on. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. It's going to go ahead and go. Come on, put your hands together.
Right now, we're going to have baby come on up, family. We're going to do real quick a baby dedication, if y'all don't mind. We're going to knock this out. And Terrence, if you can give us some soft music, string sound, you know. You can come stand right here. If we got a family, come stand right behind them. And y'all can face towards me. You face this way. Now, I'm going to try to say the name right for the baby. Kalia? Kalia? Okay. All right. So, uh, you come on. You come on up. Um, what we're doing today, they, want, they came and they wanted to dedicate the baby of course, dedication, you can come stand with Reverend Christian Kwan, come stand with me as well. Sister Christian, you can come stand right here as well. Uh, we want to dedicate the baby, and of course, the Bible talks about train up a child uh, in the ways that they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart. And that's our hopes, that's our prayers. Usually in this time, because they're not able to make the decision for themselves as it relates to salvation, God still allows the opportunity for the baby to be covered until the baby is old enough to make the decision for themselves. And so we have a couple here today that want to dedicate the baby, have the baby dedicated, and I've um, got a chance to talk to the mother and the father and one of the things that I did share with them is that if you're not saved, because the Bible does talk about training up a child in the way that they should go, the goal is, is that if you're going to train them up, you're going to train them up God's way. I think we've gotten to the point where even when we do our marriage and we do our vows, people want to get married to jump the broom and use God for it. But then after the marriage, they do away with God. And when it comes to baby dedications, we do this, and we want God to cover the baby and bless the baby, but we dismiss the fact that we did say we was going to try to train up the baby in the way that they should go, and that's according to God's standard. And so I talked to them and I left it with them as far as salvation is concerned. Because the truth of the matter is, y'all, no matter how much you get people up here to say, you know, and we want them to stand in front of the church and to confess, you know, there are some people that really get up here and they, they leave and they still not saved because they really don't believe in their heart. So it's not about them standing up in front of you trying to say that to you. It's about really in their heart knowing that you know what, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died and rose for me. I confess my sins to you. And at that moment, if I believe that in my heart, 
according to the scripture, you are saved. So what I want to do is, I want to go ahead and uh, I think we got, who is the godparent? Do we got godparents or grandparents? Grandparents? Okay, so let me talk to the grandparents. Basically what you're saying is, is that you're going to help cover the baby. So if anything, God forbid, anything shall happen to them, you're saying that you're going to step up to help, help take care of the baby. Also to give that admonishment and advice to them as to how you did this, how to raise the baby. And the truth of the matter is sometimes we look at our parents and all my young adults know, we be like, man, mama don't know nothing. That was back in the day. I ain't listening to that. But then as you grow older, you start to realize, no, oh, mama was right. Dad was right. So the thing is, you definitely want to, what they say, uh, chew the meat, spit out the bones, take what you can, spit out what you don't need in order to raise the baby. I speak to you as the father. I don't care what happens. Stay committed to the baby. I don't care what was what are the other opportunities that will try to present itself. I don't know you, but now your decisions have to always be made towards the baby. God holds you responsible now. He holds you responsible. So however you're going to do this, even as you guys consider your relationship, like I said, I don't get in nobody business. But now, get around men that can help you. Get around men that their mindset ain't like yours. They think, they think like a father. Find those men, designate those men, and have those men that you can call on and say, hey, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that. And at the end of the day, that's going to help you raise the baby because the baby going to be looking for you. She going to be looking for you for the daddy-daughter dances. She going to be looking for you for the first field trip in elementary school. She going to be looking for you for when she, when she turned, uh, her, her, uh, oh, especially, how old, how old the baby now? Two months. When the baby be one, my wife knows when the baby turns, I'm telling her, get ready for these birthdays. The whole money thing changes. Just because the women want it. They, they want all this stuff. If it was left up to me, the birthday would have been in the garage. But now these birthdays, man, it's expensive. Jesus. But I speak life to you, sir. I speak prosperity to you. I also speak protection around you. May the angels cover you. May you start walking out the life that God intends for you. Don't, for, don't neglect your dreams, your goals, what you want to be. If the job's it's only temporary. It's setting you up for you to be the entrepreneur that you want to be or the places that you want to go. I'm going to anoint this baby. Come here, baby. Come here. This is my wife. She helped me out. All right. All right. So what I'm going to do, touch the baby. Oh, pretty, pretty. thank you right now we pray for this beautiful baby that has entered the earth God we know that you're going to cover her protect her and Father God you're going to use the parents to do so Father God I pray that you continue to cover them help them to make wise decisions from this day forward help them to grow in being what you've called them to be God, I pray right now, Father God, that they lean not to they, their, own, their own understanding, 
but God, they acknowledge you right now, God. Father God, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your covering. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, Father God, for guidance. We thank you for long life. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you right now, Father God, for your love. Father God, I pray that the grandparents will continue to love on the baby. Take the baby, Father God, and admonish, and give, give the baby advice, spend time, create new traditions, new things, Father God, so that the baby can grow up remembering this is what mom and daddy did. This is what grandma used to do. Father God, we thank you for how you're going to continue to bless the family. Now, Father God, we lift the baby to you, saying, have your way. We know, Father God, that you want the baby to grow up. And at some point, when they're able to understand that they say, I, God, I want you for myself. I want you in my life for myself. I now know what mommy and daddy taught me. And now I want to lean on you for myself. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. certificate for you. Okay. So this is a certificate on behalf of Pine Hills Community Church. It says certificate of dedication. This certifies, certifies that Kalia Robinson, birthday date April 25th, 2022. Birthday place, Orlando, Florida, was brought to Pine Hills Community Church by his parents and family. Jarice Robinson and Tanarja Robinson and family and was there publicly dedicated to God and we make sure that that on, on the 19th of 19th day of June 22 Julius L. Miles the third pastor amen 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 hallelujah you may go back to your seats amen y'all all right Amen. 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 Real quick, come on, let's get in this word. I hope that didn't damper your moment. This is what we're here for. Amen. And it's good to see that, you know, families want to have the babies dedicated. Amen. And want to be brought up the Lord's way. Um... I want you real quick, go to Acts chapter 3, and let's stand for the reading of the word. Good to see some visitors in here. Amen. We honor you for taking out your time to come and be with us on today. Acts chapter 3. Amen. Legacy, make sure your robe, they stand into their feet. You too. Thank you. Love you. Amen. Daddy just jumped in. All right. Today we don't have kids' church due to the mere fact that um, our kids' church leader is out. And um, on their anniversary, celebrating... We honor God for that. If you got your Bibles, in Acts chapter 3, and I'm going to be reading from the expanded version. The Bible says, one day Peter and John went to the temple at 3 o'clock. This is the set time, this set time. This time set each day for the afternoon prayer service. There at the temple gate, a beautiful gate, was a man who had been crippled all his life. I may need another mic. Every day he was carried from the people going to the temple. The man saw Peter and John going into the temple and ask them for money. Peter, 
Peter and John looked straight at him and said, look at us. The man looked at them thinking they were going to give him some money. Verse 6 says, but Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold. But I do have something else I can give you. By the power of Jesus Christ from Nazareth, stand up and walk. Verse 7 says, then Peter took the man's right hand and lifted him up. Immediately, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. And he went into the temple with them, walking, jumping, and praising God. And all the people recognized him as the crippled man who was always sat by the beautiful gate begging for money. And now they saw this same man walking and praising God, and they were amazed. They wondered how this could happen. I want to talk to you from the subject title this is something else this is something else Lord bless this message in Jesus mighty name when you look at this particular text you see that there's some men deciding to be used by God and they are really headed to a place and their mind is focused on one thing but while their mind is focused on one thing they're coming to a situation that causes their mind to get focused on something else and a lot of times us as men to be honest we juggle a lot. Some of us got a lot on our plate. Some of you are great managers at what you do. But some of us, we have a hard time managing a lot. We have a hard time managing a lot. And these men are right now, they're together. They're two men together, which means don't, let's not discount this kind of stuff. There are two men together. They, 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 they are going into the temple. They're going into the church. They are going into this place to pray and they're going together as a team they're going together um, uh, which means they're in agreement where they're going and as they go into this uh, they're getting ready to go into the temple they are stopped by the mere fact that there's a man that has an issue this man's issue of course is He's crippled. He has a hard time walking. He has a hard time with stability. He has a hard time staying up on his feet. He got people that have brought, them, brought him there and he sits there. And this is an everyday thing. This is an everyday opportunity because it is at this hour, people will come to the temple to pray. So this man, had enough wisdom to know when to come be sat at this gate. He had enough wisdom, he had enough insight to know that watch this, if I got an issue, there's a place that I need to be at, but watch this, because I need an answer. I need something that's going to help me with where I am concerning my issue. And since I can't walk like I want to, since I can't run like I want to, since I'm not able, I, I have the, uh, the inability to, to stand, I don't, I don't have no stability um, um, concerning my life, I just need somebody to just get me to this gate. And you can just imagine this mind, this man having the mindset of this. All I need is somebody just to get me there. Sometimes when you go through life, sometimes when life hit, I'm telling you, when you have some of the hardest things that hit you, you, you become numb to your pains. You become numb to what bothers you. You become numb to the very thing that, that, uh, that you have a problem with. And so watch this, you get used to just the normal way 
of living. You just want the norm. Just get me to the gate. I just want to sit in front of a gate. Matter of fact, if you're going to sit me in front of a gate, sit me in front of a beautiful gate. Don't sit me in front of an ugly gate. Sit me in, sit me in, watch this. I don't care if I got issues. Don't put me in Pine Hills. Put me over in Windermere. Because people, sometimes we want, uh, we want another location that looks nice, but watch this, in reality, you ain't nice. Your issues are there whether you go from Pine Hills to Apopka, whether you leave here and go to Zimbabwe. Watch this. You, we all are going to have the issues. And there are some issues you're not going to be able to run from. And you'll take them same issues to 2023, to 2024, you moved to Texas and you thought you didn't got away from your issues. Oh, baby, I need a new scenery. I need, to, I'm going, I'm, look, I need, I need a new place. And you didn't went to Atlanta. You thought Atlanta was going to be it. Only to find out you still got to deal with a gate. The only thing is you just switched gates. The gate that you was at was ugly. Not a gate that you're at is more beautiful. So it appears to be that everything is going to work out based off of your location. And the truth of the matter is, it doesn't. This man is sitting at the gate of beautiful with a cripple. He's crippled. He cannot walk. I need y'all to understand that his movement is limited. I'm talking to somebody in here. You are in a place where your movement is limited. You're not as free as you want to be. And God is saying that's not the will for your life. I want you to experience freedom in this season. Yeah, I want you to look at your neighbor real quick. Let's act like we in church for real. Look at your neighbor and tell him God wants you to experience freedom. Yeah, and he wants you to experience freedom wherever you go. If you are saved, if you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit wants you to be empowered, favored, and blessed, and free wherever you go. Wherever you walk into, whatever place you walk, you are still free in Jesus. People can, mm, people can say what they want, but watch this. I ain't studying y'all because watch this. I didn't lifted this thing up off me. God didn't got this thing up off me. I don't have to deal with it no more. And you might can't understand my praise. Oh, I'm getting my I'm going too fast. But some of you, you don't know where I came from. You don't know how good it feels for this burden to be lifted. I'm in a new place. But this man, he can't really say that. The only thing he can say is I'm in a new place, but I'm still crippled. I'm crippled at night. I'm crippled in the day. I'm crippled when I'm at church. I'm crippled when I leave church. Oh my God, everywhere I go is crippled. Everywhere I go, I feel like there's no movement. You ever been in a place, you ever been around people who are stagnant? You ever been around in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the company of people whose minds are limited? There's no movement, there's no life? Am I talking to the people in here? Because y'all quiet. Like, because watch this, because we put on this facade, man, that... Pastor Miles, man, I'm <laughs> at least I'm in front in front of something beautiful. You know, women can be beautiful, but you still can be crippled. Men can be amazing, but ladies, you still can be crippled. Your movement is limited. You're restricted. Restricted. I want to talk to the men because it is Father's Day. Who are restricted. Please look at this man. Please, let's look at the man. The man is sitting at the gate and he's crippled. Peter and John is getting ready to walk in, go, go beyond the gate. They're getting ready to go beyond the gate and, and they're having a conversation. Uh, they're having a conversation with each other and as they get right to go past the gate they catch the eye of a crippled man 
They catch the eye of a man that his moves ain't good. He can't really make moves like he want to. It catches the eye of Peter and John and, and the man he wants something from Peter and John. And I like the response that Peter and John gives him. He said, silver and gold. Y'all know, y'all know this. I don't, I don't have it. But what I do have, I give to you. Okay, okay. Y'all don't, y'all don't know. When the, when the shower. Please understand. We don't know whether this man is he crippled because he got a sprained ankle. We don't know whether he's crippled because he has a fractured foot. We don't know what's causing him to be crippled. Um, but what I can see is money is not gonna fix it. So, so now you got these two men that's willing to help him. Oh God, that's willing to help him. And here's the deal. What the man needs is not money. Watch this fellas, listen to me. What the man needs in his ankles is strength. He needs power. Notice, oh my God, notice that the two men don't go by the man some other feet. He don't go get the man some other legs and some, some get you, let me get you some new ankles together. These men don't have to do no surgery on this man. They just let the man know up front what he is requesting, they don't have it. But what they do have, they want to give it to him. They present the man with something else besides what he is requesting. Yeah. And here is where some of the people you tried to help, they got you messed up. Because watch this, they thought what they needed was a person to give them money. Okay, it's Father's Day, so I'll just talk to my fellas. Okay, fellas, she thought she needed a man with a nice ride. She thought she needed a, a tall man. She thought she needed a muscle man. While the other woman needed Yogi the Bear. And they rejected you because you was not the desired man that looked the part. But can I tell you something, fellas? You might not look the part, but you are the part. Okay, okay, okay. And sometimes, oh my God, fellas, you got to watch having your value being held in somebody else because sometimes people don't know, oh my God, they think they know what they need when they really don't know what they need. And oh my God, I love this because I like these men. You're talking about men who have a prayer life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're talking about men who are going to prayer, which means these two guys have a, a connection with God. Okay, okay. They have a connection with God. They might not have the muscles, but they got the connection with God. They might not be as tall as you want them to be, but they got a connection with God. They might not be as intellectual as you want them to be, but they got a connection with God. They might not wear the clothes that you want them to wear, but they have a connection with God. And if you ought to be led by the Spirit, you should be happy to have a man that want to be in the presence of God. I know we don't make this thing look, oh my God. I know we try to make this thing look like, oh, he should look like this and he should have this and he should drive this. But no, I'd rather have a woman that know how to tap into God. You know how to tell me what the mind of God is. Why y'all looking at me like this? Because right now what we're doing is we watching so much TV and social media where everybody want to look the part but they not the part. And we wonder
wonder why we're, why we're where we are and the way we are because you never wanted to be challenged on the mere fact, do you got somebody that want to know God? We made it boring. We made it, we made it, we made it lame to be in church. We created this notion that you gotta look like this in order to be, to be, to be a winner. If you don't have your identity in God right, you will totally be jacked up with people. You will be so easily swayed and moved by people's thoughts because you don't know the power of having a prayer life as a man. We made prayer as if just because you don't speak in tongues, watch this, oh man, well maybe I'm not as deep and I'm not like pastors. at Jesus, Jesus didn't always speak in tongues neither. Matter of fact, you can't really find too many places that he did. Which means I don't have to I don't have to pray like you. I don't have to stay on my knees hours like you. I just need to have a connection with God. I just need to know at the end of the day, there's a set time that I go into the presence of God to petition and to make a plea and to make a request. Luke chapter 18 verse 1, because I know y'all need receipts. It says men ought to always pray. Why does he say that? Because he's talking to the disciples, trying to tell them about a widow woman that is going to the judge every single day. And the judge is getting sick and tired of the woman coming to, coming to him. And he says in Luke chapter 18, I'm going to give this widow woman what she wants because I'm tired of her bothering me. I'm tired of her keep coming back to me. And sometimes, oh my God, when you got a man that prays, you, you got a man that stays in the face of God, eventually something can be changed. Eventually something can be shifted. Eventually something can come out of his prayer life. That's why you want to push a man, fellas, we want to be men that pray. You don't have to preach to pray. You don't got to prophesy to pray, but you need a prayer life to prophesy. You need a prayer life to preach. You need to have the mind of God, the will of God, the heart of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I get happy off this kind of stuff because watch this. Your preaching can be entertainment. Oh my God, your singing can be entertainment, but when you got a prayer life, your prayer life will move in people in ways you can't even move. Oh my God. It can deliver people in ways that you cannot deliver. me online I came to tell you you need a prayer life I ain't backing down from it you the older I'm getting Terrence I need a prayer life the, 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 the more that I watch my kids I need a prayer life the more that I keep looking at the, the society and when I go with Target and I see that my baby got to put on y'all ain't saying nothing they can't even wait to learn about their sexuality they as a baby they trying to make my child well rainbow shirts y'all ain't saying y'all can say what y'all want to say but I came to tell you at some point you got to let my child be a child and let my child grow up to make their own decisions but y'all my God but I pull my child and I pray over my child I say God do it for my child God watch my child God teach me how to keep my child covered God teach me how to keep my mind covered because when they do get old when they do get old don't you lose yourself because they're old enough to make their decisions the importance of the prayer life is not always for them Sometimes the importance of the prayer life is that you be empowered to handle the decisions that they make when they're wrong. I'm 
talking to mothers in here that you know it's hard for you to see your babies in pain. Fathers, we move along. We say, okay, you're going to do you going to eat this. But mothers, they can't sleep at night when they don't know where their baby at. They, they uncomfortable because they, they, they know that the child is making a bad decision and it's something. My mama would call me and she say, you can tell me all what you want to tell me. But she say, Monte, I know when something is wrong with you. And sometimes I just don't tell mama because some things I be like, mama, you don't need to hear anyway. But mama can call me and just say, I know, Monte, something is wrong. And then I be sitting there like, Lord Jesus, I know that's my mama for real. I mean, I, oh my goodness, your mama know. Mama knows. Having a prayer life is impactful and it's powerful. It's you learning how to stay in communication with God so that you can make the moves for a person, place, or thing. The more you pray, you'll be empowered to deal with a person, place or thing the more you pray you'll be empowered to deal with a person place or thing the more you pray you'll be empowered to deal with a person place or thing they're going to try to figure out why you're so patient it's because you got a prayer life they'll try to figure out why you're so loving it's because you got a prayer life. It's be, oh my God, they're trying to figure out why you didn't move when you needed to move. It's because I got a prayer life. And my prayer life requires me to die to myself and to follow the will of God, to walk in the will of God, to walk in the desires that God has for a person, for a place, or a thing. Are y'all hearing me? There is a person at the gate called Beautiful. And oh my God, the, 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 the two men could have gave this man, this crippled man, some money. But they said, I don't have it. But what I do have is the power of God to help you in your situation. Now, the Bible says he has the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I don't know what your Bible says, but it says the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nazareth. Why, why does he say the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Because watch this, Jesus was not even born in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. But by way, he left Bethlehem, went into Nazareth. Oh my God. And that's where he grew up. That's where he was trained. That's where things happened. Please understand that Nazareth is a country town. It's for country bumpkins. It's a rural area. It's it's an area where there's nothing happening. It's an area where people will look at this area and be like, can, is, can anything come out of this place? And Jesus come out of a place that watch this, that has nothing. So clearly, Jesus know how to deal with nothing. Clearly, Jesus know how to deal with a place that don't have nothing going on. And so he comes, all these men, they come and they deal with the crippled man. And he says, by the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth why do we say the by the power of, uh, uh, of Jesus Christ in Nazareth also I want to tell you this is that he had to say Jesus Christ of Nazareth Nazareth because according to theologian there's a lot of men names were Jesus uh-huh so when I call Jesus of Nazareth I'm talking about a certain Jesus yeah I'm talking about a certain Jesus that's just like you everybody want to call on God but do they know Jesus for it y'all ain't saying nothing everybody's saying they spiritual but do they have the Holy Ghost or are you just clinging on the candles and all this other frog y'all ain't hear what I'm saying no I know the power of Jesus I need somebody to just lift their hands and say I know the power of Jesus yeah I know the power power of Jesus I know there's no man like this man there's no man like this man and these two men that are unified that is helping this crippled man say what we do have we got the power of Jesus of Nazareth takes the man hands lifts him up and the man leaps up the man start jumping. The man start, now watch this. I like this because the man was receptive to his miracle. You know, 
by some of us. God can't do some things with some of us. You're not receptive. You're too caught up in your pain. You're too caught up in your issues. You're too caught up in your addictions. You're too caught up in, you, you're too caught up in, this is how I live. This is how I do things. This is how we do things. So we can't, we can't, and now you, God wants to move in your life, but you're not receptive. The man did not say, don't touch me. The crippled man did not say, don't lift my hand. It says, the Bible says he lifted up his hand, the man, he lifted up his hand. And the man began to jump. And the man begins to walk. I want to come and talk to the fellas. Hold up for a minute, Anthony. Just, 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 just. I want to talk to the men in here today. As this is Father's Day, the world that we living in, oh God. I want to tell you that it's going to get better, but it's not. And if we don't have strong men, I'm talking about strong men that are willing to speak up and to stand for what's right. We gonna let cripple be the norm of men. We're, oh God. I don't understand how we so quiet about, oh man, we loud when it come down to doing, walking the streets, when it come down to changing social justice issues and stuff, but we are quiet in church. Where they do that at? How can you be out there in the streets marching for, for the people and trying to get laws passed, but then we're trying to stand up for Christ in here and I never can find you? Thank you. It's only three or four of y'all clapping. I'm sorry. As men, as fathers, we got to be men who cover. We got to be men who stay responsible for not only the spiritual, but the social climates, the environments that is not, watch this, not just church, but even outside, not just outside, but in church too. We gotta have a prayer life so that we can demonstrate power for the men who are crippled. For the men who are used to what's normal. You just want somebody to bring you to a place. You never, you never can bring your own self. You never can, you, you, you never can develop in a place where you support your own self. But now you have to depend on others. God is not calling you to just depend on a government. You are the Oh my God, you are representatives of the king. You shift the government. That's Miles. I sit here and I look at this story, Reverend Christian, and I'm done. The man's, Dr. Fleeton, this crippled man didn't need new feet. He needed strength. Here's what the Lord told me to tell the men today. And he says, this is where they need prayer. He said, tell the men I'm about to give them strength. Okay. 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 Because sometimes what you think is broke, it ain't broken. It just needs strength. I, I don't need to give you a new job. I'm about to strengthen you on that job. I don't, I don't need to give you a new, I don't need to have you to be with another lady. I'm going to strengthen the relationship you in. 
Y'all, 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 see, 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 that's, here it goes. Because some of us, we rather want silver and gold rather than the will of God. What is his will for your life? Maybe what you need is not somebody else or something. Oh my God, you need and your something else is, watch this, God's strength. He wants to blow on your life. He wants to blow on your situation. He wants to, he wants to renew you right where you are. You're not, oh my God, you're not going to need what you thought you need. In my closing, there's a, a boy. He's with his father. And the boy and the father, uh, every Saturday, Reverend Christian, the, the father and the son would go out and they would take their remote control cars and they'll go out and race. And this little boy, he's happy, he's following dad, taking his remote control car, and he got his little remote control, and, and, and he puts it beside daddy's car. So dad says, on, on your mark, get set, get ready. He tell him, go. So both of them would just try to make the cars go. As time went on, the little boy started seeing he was happy about being out there, but he started seeing that his car is not going as fast as his daddy car. And he started getting even more upset and he started having all these tantrums like how my son is. He takes the car, he throws it down, picks the car up and go throw it in the trash. The dad is like, wait son, what you doing? And the boy goes and he goes and have this tantrum and he go hide just like my son. Go hide up on the bench. Go hide up under the table. He don't want to play no more. He don't want to be bothered because what he has is not going according to what he wants. The father goes and get the, the uh, remote control car out of the trash can. He sits down with the car and he opens up where the batteries are, take the batteries out, put some new batteries in there, and once he put the new batteries in the car, he sit the car down and he says, look son, the car is moving in a way that it should. The boy gets happy and come back to drive, grab his remote controller and he starts saying, okay daddy, let's do this again. Let me tell you something. Sometimes Oh my God, the stuff that you trying to throw away, God is saying, don't throw it away. I'm about, I want to keep that and I want to use it. Don't throw, oh my God, don't throw your relationship away. Pray about it. Have God to fix it. Oh my God, I wish I had somebody up in here. Ask God to touch it. Ask God to come in and intervene. Ask God to renew strength. Yeah. Send power. Send power to what's not working right. Yeah. So fathers, if I can have you real quick to stand on your feet. If you are father in here. If you are father. If you are father. If you are father. us online we praying for you too yeah I'm praying that the power of God is going to hit you where you at too here at this church I'm going to tell y'all right now I'm praying for the demonstration of God I want the power of God I don't want to preach for no dollars no, no fame no 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 you can have that I want to see the power of God in men. I want to, I want to see I want to see men coming to say, you know what, Pastor Miles, I ain't scared to tell my testimony no more. I know what I was. I know where I've been, but I'm willing to to let God deal with me, Pastor Miles. You know what? I'm that crippled man you talked about. 
I may not be, I may not be the man that helped the crippled man. No, I'm the crippled man you was talking about. I'm the one that my moves was limited. I'm the one that I thought I was just doing enough. I'm the one that the scenery changed and I thought everything was all right until some, until God sent somebody and saw something bigger than where I was. So I need every woman to stretch your hand towards a man. If your man in here, if your father in here, stretch your hand towards him. Yeah. Yeah. If your father, and I and I want to pray for this too. If your father, if, if your father is not here anymore, maybe he died. Maybe he's maybe maybe you don't have that relationship with him. I pray that God strengthen your heart. I pray that if you don't have that relationship with him, that you would be the one to allow the Holy Spirit to use you when you're ready to go and talk to him and talk with him. There's nothing wrong with him letting, letting the dad know your heart, where you at. Dad, you hurt me. You haven't been there in my life. You haven't been consistent. All I wanted was you to just be there. All I wanted was you to just talk to me. Somebody need to have that, that talk with their father. But for those in here, you do have your dad. Stretch your hand towards them. Lord, today, I pray for strength. I pray for restoration. I pray Father God, that God, they don't, they don't take on just being normal. They don't take their issues and just take it to another gate. God, I pray that they get delivered from being crippled today. I pray that they get delivered from being crippled today. Whatever their issue is that's causing them to not move how they want. Whatever's in the way. I pray, God, that they be obedient and accept what you allow, God. Accept your will. Accept your power. Accept your strength. There are men in here, God. There are men. I'm praying for the men that's not here today. Some of you left your man at home. I'm praying for him, too. God, send them a fresh fire. Father God, send them a new zeal. Father God, I pray that God, you touch their minds, touch their hearts, touch what they are doing. Some of them, Father God, they don't want to come to church no more because God, they've been through so much. I pray for the hurt, the pain, the division that they experience. That they will be drawn back to you because God, we need your men. We need powerful men, we need strong men. We need men that will say, I want to be raised up. How God want me to be raised up. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 Let's do this real quick. If you're not saved and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, I would say come up here right now. Don't think about it. Don't wait on it. You want to be saved today. Allow God just to say, you know what, Pastor Miles, man, I, I want to do this thing right. I want to try what you've been saying. I want to try Jesus. If that's you in here, everybody's praying. Come on, this is a major moment. Everybody's praying. Tug on their hearts, God. Those who are watching us, they're not saved. Tug on their hearts, God. Let them know that you're watching them. Let them know that you love them. Maybe you don't have a church home and you say, I want to get connected to this church. Maybe you left and now you want to come back and you want to rededicate yourself to the church. If that's you, don't think about it no more. Come on up. Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one?
I need everybody to stretch it. Kevin said he just want prayer. That's it. He just want prayer. Lord, we thank you today. God, we pray for our brother Kevin. I pray, Father God, that you continue to be with him. The knowledge that he do have of you, that he do have of you, God, that you will enhance that knowledge so that, God, he can grow in having a relationship with you. God, I also pray for protection around him as he continues to grow in walking out his dreams, his goals, in doing this thing called life. I pray that, God, you continue to touch him from the crown of his head to his feet. Father God, is this your baby? I pray, God, for the baby. Father God, I pray, Father God, that you touch the baby. That's his reason, God. You're going to use him, God, for the sake of the baby. If you don't mind, let me just touch your head. In the name of Jesus. Now, the Holy Spirit that's in me, may it touch this man right now. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this life. It's in Jesus. Yeah, you got one more? Bring him. Come on. KJ. Come here, KJ. Come on. Oh, yeah. I like this. I love this. Hallelujah. I know one thing. Your, your daughter's a protector, too. God, touch KJ. Whatever he's in. I, I pray for KJ's future. I'm going into the future for KJ. God, the great things that you're going to do with him. Father God, the places you're going to take him, the things that, the unique ways you're going to use with him. Touch his heart, touch his mind, touch his feet, places that he goes. We thank you for what you're going to do with this family. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We don't want to get his information after we're done. Let's get ready to get an offering. Let's get up out of here. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Listen, um, if you're watching online, we're getting ready to give offering. You can give money sign love cash out. You give on cash out. Money sign love PHCC. Money sign love PHCC. If you're still writing checks today, okay, I know times are changing. Lord have mercy. You still writing checks. We take those checks. You can drop them off to the church. Mail them in as well. We're asking that you continue to tithe and give your offering. This will help us to continue to do ministry here at the church. Amen. Amen. Also, we have Tithely where you can give on Tithely as well. Okay? So if you need any information, you're watching us online, definitely type it in. They'll be able to uh, answer your request on there. Thank you so much. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, those who are watching. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a good day. Until next time. Amen. Amen.